Welcome, welcome everyone. God bless you and good to see you this evening. Well, this evening for me, as I always say, and it probably is another time of the day for you, but you're joining us nonetheless. And I so appreciate you taking the time just to be with us here on Prayer, Power and Prophecy. It is Thanksgiving weekend. And so I know sometimes a lot of folk are all around trying to get things done and prepared for the big day tomorrow. And we are doing the same. Our house is filled with a sense of food and preparation as we have over family and friends. And what a special time. Again, we're looking forward uh, to have. And again, I just want to say that in the midst of it all, though, God still has an assignment and a purpose for us, even here on the big day of preparation. I mean, this is like Christmas Eve for some. And so <laughs> you might wonder, well, why why show up and do a session at all? Why? Because, you know, God has something to say. And I, I, I'm thankful for it because it has been something that has really encouraged my soul. And I want to pray over you guys this evening and speak this word into your heart. I mean, that you would be uplifted and you would be strengthened to continue to do the things that God has anointed and called you to do and know as well how to navigate the tensions that come in the midst of the journey. Praise God. Well, before, again, we pray and get started, let me just shout some of you and a good evening again to our few faces who are here right now. Good evening, Kathy. Welcome. And Melissa, praise God. And my wife is here, even as she's downstairs again, doing all the work. And again, I just thank God for you guys. And so again, you can go ahead and share the message. And, you know, we started a little late uh, because we had just some technical stuff to work through. But God is good. God is good. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you for the opportunity to connect here this evening with the family of faith. Lord, from wherever they're healing from across the earth, God, I thank you that your purposes and promises towards them are yes and amen. And Father, I thank you for the yes that they've given in their heart, the yes to pursue you, the yes to come after you, the yes, Lord God, to again, be hungry after the dynamics that you have spoken into their hearts and lives. God, they've heard your promises, God, and they've hell to the plow. God, I want to thank you, God, for their grace and determination to keep steady, Lord, tapping into your strength to keep steady on the way. So may this word be an encouragement. May it be an upliftment. God, may it again impact them and transform them in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Well, do me a favor and turn to the book of Numbers because that's where I want to take us today. And I want to make this decree over you. And that is their rejection, all right? Or rather their resistance, again, is not your rejection. In this life, and especially those that have made a determination to walk in the fullness of God's purpose, you have, again, surrendered to God's call. Oftentimes, the assignment that the enemy sends of rejection is sent to derail you, to get you off that trajectory that God has you on of accomplishing purpose and rejection. I mean, it comes with a sting. It comes with a sting. And oftentimes, even as David said, one of the characters in the Bible that suffered under some of the most heinous acts of rejection, as he said, you know, if it was an enemy, that would be fine. But it was one close to me that, again, shook a spear right through my heart, not physically, uh, again, but even emotionally, even mentally and spiritually. And David had to work through several dynamics of fighting against this spirit, fighting against this assignment that was sent to take him out of the trajectory of his destiny, to get him bitter and resentful and to cause him to lose the battle on the inside. Because you see, the enemy understands, if I can get you to lose the battle on the inside in regards to guarding your heart, and again, you allow resentment, unforgiveness, and the sting of bitterness to build up on the inside, what does it do? It disables God's goodness towards you. In fact, God speaks in Matthew 18 through his son, and he says, listen, through the parable of the man who was forgiven much, but again went to hold hostage the other man that owed him little and God said to him given the example through uh, the master and the master's response listen again even in how you have treated that person so you will be treated and he was thrown back into prison and Jesus made an example of it by saying listen if we do not forgive we cannot be forgiven in fact we block the blessing of heaven we block the conduit of God's release coming into our lives and so 
it is important to know how to manage resistance that shows up in the form of rejection and how to win against it. And so when we look at Israel's journey, and there's so much that is revealed in Israel's journey through, uh, again, their leave of Egypt and their journey into the promise. And there is so much dynamics that we can learn in that lesson. And I'm thankful that God took them on the journey that he took them on. Now, certain things that they did to extend that journey, again, was, again, in their hand and responsibility, but there were aspects of it where God took them through several different territories uh, purposely, again, to build, again, his uh, 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 purpose in the midst of them, even as he was accomplishing his purpose through them. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, God was working on conforming their hearts. He was working on getting them ready to obtain the promise. Because you see, if we obtain the promise and our hearts are not ready for it, that same promise can become poison to us or it can become a prison to us in fact it can even act as a witness against us and judge us because of how we have managed it and so God was invested in the inner life in the transformation of the heart and he took them through several processes that caused them to encounter several things along the way several things that happened outside of their camp and also several several things that manifested on the inside of their camp and so I, i'm going to try my best just to summarize some of this because some of these portions of scripture are pretty lengthy but i'm going to read from numbers 20 and i'm going to start from verse 21 and we're going to capture uh rather verse 14 and we're going to capture that journey uh uh, as they pass through Edom and we're also going to continue on as they pass through not just Edom but then Canaan and then the aspects of the journey that led them into the land of the Amorites and so there are three different dispositions that they found themselves in three different territories and there were specific things that happened in those territories that acted as resistance against them and how they responded to that again reveal again God's purposes not only in them but again for us to draw from what they uh, or rather how they would have responded draw from that principles of practice and so from verse 14 of Numbers 20 let me just read it here it says now Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom Thus says your brother Israel, and now you must understand, remember Edom, the Edomites were the descendants of Esau. And so remember Esau and Jacob. And so there is that kindredness, right? That kinship, that brotherhood. But again, the letter goes out and it says, thus says your brother Israel, you know all the hardship that has befallen us and how our fathers went down to Egypt and we dwell in Egypt a long time and the Egyptians afflicted us and our fathers. And when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent the the angel and brought us up out of Egypt. Now here we are in Kadesh, a city on the edge of your border. Please let us pass through your country. We will not, again, and he goes on, we will not touch the fields or the vineyards or drink water from your wells. Again, we will go along the king's highway. I love that. We will not turn aside to the right hand or to the left until we have passed through your territory. And again, basically, they're pretty much trying to, you know, lay out their plan to say, listen, we're not going to touch anything that belongs to you. Again, we're going to keep focus and we just want to pass through come on you know sometimes in life you meet certain points where God I just need to get to the next step God I just need again to pass over this particular space and place that seems uh, uh, oftentimes uh, 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 like affliction and get through it and get to the other side and so you know they were anticipating that this might be a period of stress and trouble but they sent that letter you know they were being as nice as they can how many of you are are nice Christians at least you try to be as kind <laughs> as you can be again you try to follow protocol you try again to walk again as God has called you to walk but even in the midst of walking upright and doing the things that you should do you see they they, they even address the king they they followed protocols but yet still listen to what happens there was resistance and this is a reality in life Job as well was an upright man but yet still there were things that happened to him that were not a product of his sin that were not a product of his rebellious heart it was just a product of of God's processes and many of us have found ourselves there 
again, where we are in a part of our journey where we are facing resistance. And sometimes we can look inwardly and crucify ourselves thinking, you know, what, what is the problem? God, why am I the problem? Why am I doing or what am I doing that's causing all these issues? But oftentimes it is God who has established your way because he's doing something deeper and he's doing something greater. And so they sent this letter. And just to summarize things, because as we read on in verse 18, the king of Edom responds to them and says, listen, you will not pass through. You shall not pass through this land lest I come out against you with the sword. Again, and so they were threatened and the children of Israel did what? They said, listen, again, we just want to go by the highway. We just, in verse 19, our livestock, they're pretty much repeating what they said before. Our livestock won't drink your water. You know, we won't mess with anything of yours. Just let us pass. And then the Edomites said again, no, you shall not. We will come up against you with a strong hand. And so in the midst of this situation, what happens? Edom refused uses them and Israel makes a decision okay well I am going to go another way Israel makes a decision again that again this is not a battle worth again fighting over I'm going to continue on and believe God I'm meant to bless me instead of me engaging myself in this that might end up stressing me listen there are some battles that belong to the Lord and you're not to touch and oftentimes you know sometimes we got this thing in us that wants to respond again to every or rather react Again, to everything that tends to bark at us or bite at us. You know, we want to oftentimes in our flesh, in our carnal nature, give a pound for a pound. But there are times in our journey where we have to abide by God's wisdom to know, okay, this battle, no, don't engage in it, move on from it. Even though you rightly think you deserve better, listen, some things you just have to leave in the master's hand. And that's wisdom for some of you because this was their first way uh, of interacting with who were, again, and like family, remember, they addressed the letter as to brothers in verse 14 and 15. And so Eden, remember, the family of Esau, brother of Jacob, brother of Israel. And sometimes it's those close to you. It's relationships, again, that you need to preserve. It's relationships, again, that oftentimes are very intimate that can end up in circumstances where if you go ahead and you respond wrongly in those things or react because, again, well, you know what? I deserve to have my way and I deserve to have my rights known. You know, again, oftentimes you can end up damaging that to such a severe place and even to a worse place. And oftentimes the wisdom of God will lead you in a direction where like Jacob or rather Isaac, rather, in Genesis 26, he made a determination after they had been fighting about him you know he went you know building and digging wells and another group came in and said listen you know you can't have that well here and you can't you know use this space here and they pushed him and they you know rejected him and Isaac making the determination in his heart and says, listen, you know what? Well, I'm going to move on. And he goes to another territory. He digs a well there. And the same thing happens. Confusion, frustration, competition, and envy. And he makes a determination. Listen, this is not worth me fighting over. I'm going to move to another place until God brought him into Rehoboth, which means a broad space where God established him and then blessed him. And there were no tensions. Listen, sometimes some of us, we are engaging in fights that God is saying, let it go. Let it go. Go. Come on, I want you to say it with me. Let it go. Let it go. Father, give us the wisdom to know when to let it go. Because again, the thing that you're holding on to, sometimes you're thinking, well, this is God's best for you. But it really is not. God has something better. God has something greater. In fact, I just want to just jump there to Genesis 26, amen, and, and, and just, just dig in there again just a bit and, and just help you out with this. Verse 19, it says this again, and rather, wait, well, let me just go from verse 18. It says, and Isaac dug again the wells of water, which they had dug in the days of Abraham, his father, for the Philistines had stopped uh, them up after the death of Abraham. He called them by the names which his father had called them. And Isaac's servants dug in the valley and found a well of running water there. But the herdsmen of Gerar quarreled with Isaac's herdsmen saying, the water is ours. It belongs to us. You hear that? So he called the name of the well Isaac because they quarreled. They quarreled with him. Isaac means enmity. Amen. It means that competition, that place of envy and enmity. And so he determined this was not worth my energy. This was 
was not worth fighting over. Listen, it says in verse 21 that he went on and he dug another well. And it says that they quarreled over that one as well, saying the water belongs to us. Listen, he went and do all the work, but listen, they're crying out the water belongs to us. And so he called that place Sitna, all right? Uh, 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 again, which or rather Sitna means an enmity, sorry. Again, it means quarrel, but he called that place enmity. And so again, here he is dealing with all of these challenges. And again, Isaac is making the determination. Let me just move on. Verse 22, listen to this now. And he moved from there and dug another well, and they did not quarrel over it. Come on. Somebody say, God, thank you for making a space and a place for me. Come on. I want you to say, I want you to open your mouth. Because again, sometimes we are speaking... Uh, the things that are happening that are more so negative. And God says, no, I want you to speak light into this situation. So God, even before it comes to pass, some of you need to cry out like Jabez. God, again, I know this is my situation. It's painful, but God, I thank you for making a space and a place for me. And it says, so he called its name Rehoboth because he said, for now the Lord has made room for us and we shall be fruitful in the land. Come on. I want you to say it better. God has something better beloved he has again something better laid up for you and sometimes it's us trying to hold on to that thing fight over that thing that we are saying it's mine it's mine it's mine and somebody else is saying well it's mine it's mine it's mine beloved let it go let the wisdom of god encourage you today amen some fights, they're not worth it. There are others that are, but some fights are not. And Father, I just thank you for the discernment and the wisdom coming upon your people right now to know how to navigate scenarios of resistance. Amen. Their resistance is not your rejection. Listen, amen. Even in your moving on, God will cause you to dig and dig better. He will cause you to find water and more so water. Beloved, again, his promises are exceeding abundant above. Amen. And just because there was some measure of blockage, it doesn't mean that that is how the story ends beloved somebody say the story continues come on now oh if i could have two or three with me who would say but the story continues amen hallelujah and again god brought him into a broad place so here there are let's jump back to numbers 20 now here there are and again they come up to pass through edom edom resists them and again so they make a determination to go another route all right and so then they come to the land of the canaanites in chapter 21 i want you to jump over there from verse 1 and it says there that the king of arad the canaanite who dwell in the south heard that israel was coming on the road to after him then he fought against israel and took some of them prisoners so here is israel walking uprightly walking in the purposes of god we have seen no incidences where they would have done something to warrant them becoming prisoners or to warrant their arrest you know sometimes in the journey between egypt and the promised land in the journey between your past prison and your future promise sometimes there are problems that are created by your own hand and israel had a lot of that but in this particular situation it was not yet still there was a measure of what could have been interpreted as defeat there was a measure of what could have been interpreted as them being overcome but i want you to hear what happened in the midst of this situation instead of grumbling instead of saying oh my god you have forsaken us and you know we are a mess listen to this Verse 2 says, So Israel made a vow to the Lord and said, If you will indeed deliver this people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. And so the name of that place is called, again, Hormah here, which means utter destruction. But listen, the point in this right here is that there are some times along the way where you'll not just be resisted, but where it will feel like you have been overcome. There are some times along the way where the very thing you've been praying for seems to have slipped out of your hand. And you would have believed, you would have thought, my goodness, God, I had all of these prophetic promises. I have all of these things going on, but it seems like either the prophet missed it, or again, you were not in it, or something or the other, because it didn't happen as I imagined it. Now, I am in a place where I'm overwhelmed, where I feel overcome. But beloved, even in such a circumstance, again, listen to the, uh, the posture, or rather, 
watch the posture of Israel. Listen to their conversation. The Bible says they made a vow. A vow is a place, especially a vow made with God, is the place where I come. And I'm not accusing, again, I'm not, again, being frustrated with God. A vow is a place where I come and I set covenant. Again, I make, again, a determination and a decision that this is what is going to be. Uh, uh, this is how my heart is going to be postured. And they made a determination, God, we are still going to trust in you. God, we are still going to believe in you. Even though this same problem seems to have overcome us, even though this problem has now become a prison for us and it feels like I didn't do anything wrong to deserve this, God, I am still in the midst of it going to function in my gifts. I'm still going to function in the call of God. I'm still going to be faithful. Listen, Joseph could have said, you see me, I'm in this prison. Why did God allow this to happen to me? I thought he gave me great dreams and he was in that prison for a long time, but he made a determination in his heart that he would still walk in excellence. He made a determination in his heart that he would still use the gifts, amen, for the goodness of God. Listen, when those guys woke up, the butler and the baker woke up and they seemed distressed because of their dreams. It was Joseph that came to them. They didn't come to Joseph. Joseph came to them and he said, please tell me your dreams. In other words, he was ready to be used by God, even though though he could have interpreted his situation as being rejected by God. I am coming to you today to rebuke that lie from hell over your life, that God has rejected you, that he wants nothing to do with you. See, you have been turned over to the enemy. See that infirmity in your body. You've been praying and it's just been getting worse. Um, let me tell you today, the devil is a liar. Listen, we had a young man that last week in our apostolic uh, prophetic prayer encounter 12 o'clock on Wednesdays I encourage you join us for prayer it's a powerful time we had a prayer request for a young boy a man child in the family there in Trinidad and this young boy I believe he's four years old had a severe fever it was so bad it was going on for four weeks and again the the, the whole scenario looked grim and they brought the petition before us to pray Listen, we cried out to God for this young man, not just during the session, but we continue to pray for him. And it seemed like, again, the testimony that I received, and I received it just today, it seemed like that that situation was getting worse even after we prayed. But I'm here to tell you today... <laughs> <laughs> that, that young man, that four-year-old boy is totally healed and he's back out to school. Amen. He's back out well in his class setting. He's back out again and doing what he was doing before. I want to let you know that God is faithful. And even when it seems like the tide has turned against you, make your vow to God. Make your vow to God. Make your vow to God that God, no, I'm not going to allow this to shape me. I'm not going to allow this, hallelujah, to get me off of that place of agreeing with you. God, I am still going to stand and I'm still going to agree no matter how bad it looks no matter how ugly it seems listen Paul and Silas and then singing in prison and then listen you have not been in prison for the gospel as yet I am telling you you might feel in prison to your circumstances but you have not been in prison <coughs> physically sorry physically and, and, uh, and literally no and God is saying listen oh my goodness get your vow back on track Get your vote back on track. Sometimes we use our mouth. Oh, God, it's so hard. It's so frustrating. And God understands that. I want you to know God understands that. David often vented to God. But what I love is that, you know, the Psalms don't finish at verse 1. They continue onwards. If you were to read the first, you know, first one to three verses, you might think, Oh my goodness, this is very depressing. But it continues onwards and oftentimes at the end, victory is trumpeted. Even if it is not yet received, it is trumpeted. It is mentioned. All right, David rejoices. He celebrates and then he gets his focus back on God. So I am encouraging you today, get your focus back on God. Hallelujah. But that's the Canaanites. What about the last part of the journey? What can we learn from that? The Amorites. Well, let's turn there. And while I do, I'm going to wet my throat. Hallelujah. We had such an amazing weekend in Houston for some of you who've been tracking with me again over the last few days uh it had been wonderful but I had to go through a lot of different engagements over the weekend so my throat is a bit dry so let me just wet it for a minute mm. praise God I want you to go to verse 21 of that same chapter 21 it says here, now this is the last part of the journey. I mean, there's so much that we can dig into this and, and really expound on this, but I want to give you this because this last part will help you. 
because there are times where you have to take up the sword. There are times where you have to know when to go to war again with that which God has spoken and which God has determined in the very moment to claim that which belongs to you. And this happened for Israel. And I want to share this with you. So it says in verse 21, then Israel sent messengers to Sihon, the king of the Amorites, saying, now they're again now at this part of their journey. And it says, let me pass through your land. Here they are mentioning it again. Oh my goodness. We will not turn aside into fields or vineyards. We will not drink water from wells. We will not go by the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Sihon, it says, would not allow Israel to pass through their territory. So the people of Sihon gathered together and went out against Israel in the wilderness. And he came to Jehez and fought against Israel. And Israel defeated him with the edge of the sword and took possession of his land from Arnon to the Jabbok and as far as the people of Ammon, for the border of the people of Ammon was fortified. So Israel took all these cities, and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites in Heshbon and all of its villages. And it goes on to tell you a bit about Heshbon, but the reality is, I want you to catch this here. Listen, God didn't just give them, again, the, the immediate territory of the Amorites. He gave them the surrounding territories as well. As they stood up and made a determination, no, God, uh -uh, we are going not only to pass through this, but we're going to take claim of this. And there's a point in our journey and our walk with the Lord too. When we face these resistances, we must understand our authority to stand as well. There are certain moments in your destiny where it's not about, okay, God, you've given me a piece to move on. Or, okay, God, oh my goodness, it feels like, you know, everything is against me. What do I do here? Like with the Canaanites, and they made that vow. And again, after that vow, they went back and won, by the way. I didn't think I finished that part of the story, but they went back up against the Canaanites and won. Amen? Hallelujah. How many know? It's not what happens, amen, in the first fight. Amen? Every battle, especially when we look at box, boxing, it goes to 12 rounds. It's not what happens in the first round, amen, but what happens in the end. But again, here they are in the midst of the Amorites, and God causes a zeal to rise up in them, and they take up the sword, and again, they battle, and they stand, and they win, and they press through, and they walk through, but they walk through now with ownership, again, even being more blessed than they were before. What is this telling us? Again, it is telling us there are times where we need to know when God says, again, to stand and to war with the word, the promises, the sword of the spirit. Ephesians 6, it's the word of God. What has God spoken? What has God said? Amen. What has God decreed over your life in regards to his promises? Do you know them? Have you remembered them? Do you go over them? Beloved, well, I'm encouraging you to. We are about to wrap up 2023. We're right on the brink of a new year. And I'm not saying that they're all the things that has been spoken that God wants to fulfill by the end of the year. Now, I'm not that type of prophet to come and tell you that. But I'm saying, again, there are some things yet ahead of you and some things that you have walked on, even feeling disappointed about that God wants you to go back and stand up regarding, decreeing, again, the promises that he has spoken, decreeing those prophetic promises that he has spoken over your life. Some of those things are internal and not just external. What do I mean by that? Well, some of those things are areas where God said, listen, again, you might have heard this year, you're going to write that book. Or again, this year, again, I'm going to use you such and such and such and such. Or in such a time, this is what I am going to do. And you have not seen some of those things begin to materialize. In fact, you might have been struggling even with the discipline to execute those things. And you're feeling a little bad about yourself because here we are, end of the year, and you're saying, oh my goodness, I feel like I have dropped the ball. Listen, it's not too late. And do not set a perimeter again in regards to the natural months of the earth in re and set that as, as a, a, a plotting compass over the map of God's purpose over your life. In architecture, we would take literally, you know, uh, again, the blueprint, and you'll put it over the plans and you'll look at things as it's supposed to be. But sometimes we take the world's time frame and we put that on God's. Listen, he is the one, Joel said, who redeems the time and he can redeem the time and he can redeem even that which the locust and the canker worm, a man and the caterpillar has stolen and eaten up. He can accelerate the times for you, beloved. But again, we have to come to the table with skin in the game. And the skin in the game that we need is our faith, our faith to believe. God, amen, 
it can be done. God, it is not impossible. God, with you, all things are possible. God, this mountain will be moved. God, again, I will arise and I will fulfill that which you spoke over my life. Amen. I will not be hindered by my fear. I will not be hindered again by performance. I will not be hindered by the expectations of men. God, I will arise. Amen. And I will do it by the grace of God. Paul said, by the grace of God, I am who I am. Listen, some people are going to be those who might be the turtle, uh, or rather the hare in the race. You might feel like the turtle, but beloved, I want you to know again, it's all just about being faithful and taking it one step at a time with the grace of God. Beloved, you're not in competition against anyone else. You are in that place with him where you're called to be faithful to him. And so receive from him his grace today to pick up those things you feel like you have dropped and march them out and again, walk them through to the end. I speak over you today. Hallelujah. Father, I thank you. There is a finisher's anointing. Hallelujah. I know we hear these things oftentimes, but there is a finisher's anointing that God is releasing on the weary who feel like taking their hands off the plow. But again, he won't let you. His grace, he says, is sufficient for you, even in your weakness. Hallelujah, the apostle Paul said. And so, Father, I thank you right now for the finisher's anointing coming upon your people today. Listen, that thing which was begun, that thing which felt like it hit a pause, I declare you will rise up and you will see it through to the end by the grace of God you will take out your sword oh maybe the king of Sihon the Amorites came out amen and intimidated and cast fear maybe they sowed thoughts in your mind saying again listen look at you you thought you could do it but look at you you can't even get through again a measure of it listen I cast down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God in your life and the knowledge of God is his presence prophetic promises. It's his word spoken over you. And so I want you to open your mouth right now and say, I cast down every high thing, every high lie. We cast it down now in the name of Jesus, because that's exactly what it is. It is a lie. It is an accusation from the accuser. Cast it down and rise up and fulfill that which God has called you to do. Hallelujah. Mm. Amen and amen. Oh, I'm looking at finishers today. Come on, let me just look in this chat because I'm looking at finishers today. Hallelujah. Melissa, I decree you are a finisher. Uh, man, I decree. Raquel, you are a finisher. Alex Green, I decree that you are a finisher. Hallelujah. My brother, hallelujah. Oh, my brother, Apostle Dave, I decree that you are a finisher. I decree that there are several projects that the Lord, again, yes, he has lined up before you. And sometimes even the massiveness of the vision, it seemed over overwhelming but i decree today my brother oh my brother hallelujah dave i decree today that there is a supply of divine and a jail paul said again as he prayed for it, he used that greek word again that god a man would fill us a man that he would release that inner jail a man the power again and the energy of the spirit a man some of you feel weary your hands feel tired there's much to do and there's much vision to accomplish but there is a divine release and over you dave and over the Cropper family. Oh my goodness, there are things, amen, that are being accelerated on your behalf. There are things that are being accelerated. I hear the Spirit of the Lord say, I see like an accordion in the Spirit. You know, an accordion, that instrument, and I see it stretched out, but I see the Lord compressing the accordion, and there are things that have been stretched out. There are things, again, that have seemed to fall out, but the Lord is compressing it, meaning that He's bringing the timeline again together, and again, things will be accomplished even at a quicker pace. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody give God thanks, amen, for the Cropper family, amen, and for what, again, they will accomplish by the grace of God. Listen, it's going to happen so speedily, and it's going to come together so quickly. It's going to be divinely suddenly, and again, the resources, hallelujah, for the building out and the training and the equipping of the ecclesia will be in place, says the Spirit of the Lord, amen, for have I not called you and put the vision on the inside of you, and some have had in their 
heart and some have thought with their mind, listen, he's thinking too big. Listen, again, he's believing beyond his means. But the Lord says, son, you will walk through the pathways of the Edomites. You will walk through the pathways of the Canaanites. You will walk through the pathways of the Amorites. And beloved, you will walk on the king's highway. What is the king's highway? It is the way that he has paved and prepared. Amen. It's the way of faith. Amen. It's the way, again, where our vows are made to God and not to man. Hallelujah. God, I'm in it for you. And I'm staying true. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus that your son will see. Amen. A divine acceleration. Hallelujah. And divine cooperation. Oh, my goodness. Divine cooperation. Father, I thank you for the Aaron and the hers. Hallelujah. That are holding his hand in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. Amen. For the Shebas that are coming from foreign lands to be his supply. Hallelujah. For the vision is of me, says the Lord. The grandeur and the greatness of it is of me, says the Lord. And surely it shall come to pass. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, Father, come on. Oh, the Lord has put some on in my heart that, again, really fits with that Canaanite story. That Canaanite story, you know, it's that part of the journey where we saw Israel go through the process of, again, becoming where some of them actually became prisoners, amen? Uh, and, and again, it's that part of the journey where sometimes things, again, don't go according to your expectation, but rather go in the opposite direction. It feels like, again, you're praying and things are getting worse. But for those of you who are right there, I hear the Lord say, make your vow." Make your vow, hallelujah, of loyalty. Oh, the Bible says the eyes of the Lord search to and fro throughout the earth for arts that are loyal to him. Why? Because he's looking to work with them. He's looking to perform the exceeding and abundant and above, even in the midst of them. There were those in the days of Jesus that made the Son of God marvel. The Bible says he marveled. Jesus marveled because of their faith, beloved, because they made a vow that even if they have to go to the lowest low, even if other people think that they're crazy to believe even in the midst of what they are facing and what they're dealing with they have made a vow that God I will trust in you and again there are those that are hearing me right now and you are in that place where it seems crazy but beloved there's something called crazy faith and I speak a rising up hallelujah holy vows to the Lord to determine and declare that this is the determination that I am making today that God I will stay true to what you have said and I will hold fast even though it doesn't look like it I will hold fast come on somebody say hold fast in the name of jesus amen why don't you look in the chat right now and begin to pray for a son or a daughter right now come on look at somebody's name and call them out before the lord call their names right now hallelujah lift up a name hallelujah lift up a kathy lift up an annette hallelujah lift up their name and said listen oh i declare that they will hold fast to their vows amen oh my goodness we're not vow breakers amen we are vow keepers by the grace of god and we will stand and not just at the beginning to praise God. It's easy to stand at the beginning when you hear the enormity and the, the blessedness of the vision. But it is in the midst of the process where things are a little quirky. Where things are a little other place. Where not everything is fitting as you expected. It is there that God is listening to hear. That heaven is listening to hear, beloved. It is there, hallelujah, that the angels have assembled. They are ready to move on God's behalf because they are ready, amen, to hear your faith hit the heavens. A man, a voice of faith that says, despite what I see, I move by faith and not by sight. And I will call those things that are not as though they are. And I will stand on his promises. Beloved, I'm telling you, heaven is moving. Heaven is moving. Heaven is catching up some sons and daughters today. Hallelujah. To see the thing which God has decreed come to pass in the name of Jesus. Is somebody listening to me right now. And the vision that God has given you, the vision that God has put in your heart, it demands some incredible resources coming into this season. In fact, I am seeing the figure $1.7 million is demanded regarding the vision that God has put on your heart. I don't know who you are again, but as you hear my voice out there, the Lord says, take your stand and keep your vow. Take your stand and keep your vow. The thing which I have determined to do shall come to pass and I shall bring the Sheba from a foreign land. Listen, amen. Sheba left, amen. Queen Sheba left a foreign estate to go and to visit 
visit Solomon to see if what she had heard was true. And when she confirmed it, beloved, what happened? A man, she blessed it. And this is what I am saying. Don't keep quiet. You see, the enemy wants you to keep quiet. He wants to silence you. He wants you to go duck and dive because he doesn't want you on the radar. But you see, when you stay on the radar with God, when you stay faithful, when you stay in position and you continue to push the plow, again, Sheba's will hear. A man, there will be those, a man who will become aware. But you see, if you go duck and dive, if you go giving up and taking your hands off the plow and decide, well, I just better disappear. Nobody wants to hear me anyway. I just better go, you know, not do this because everybody is doing this. Why should I give my contribution? There are enough contributions in this space already. In fact, right now, I come against that lie. There's a lie that has gone out into your mind that the devil has sown there because God has called you to do a thing, but you believe the lie that, again, there are others in the space and your contribution is not worth it. I break that lie in the name of Jesus. I say, rise up. You see, if you disappear, the Sheba won't hear. Hallelujah. But if you stay in place, beloved, she will march into your space. Hallelujah. And Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus. Oh my goodness, God. I thank you, Lord, for what you've accomplished here in the hearts of your people today. I knew I had to get here today to be with you because I don't know about you, but this has blessed me. Oh my goodness. I'm knocking over my mic. This has blessed me. <laughs> oh my goodness, God. Oh, he does exceed in abundant and above. Hallelujah. And if I'm just speaking to myself, oh my goodness. But I thank God I see some folk that are there. Yes, the camels are coming. The camels are coming. Father, I thank you. Hold fast. Hold fast to the vision. Beloved, I love you. It's two minutes out till my next session. So I have to flip the page as we go into winning of the word Bible study. But if this message blessed you, there are many that are out there right now that are feeling low in their spirit. They are ready to give up. They want to drop the ball. There are many that have encountered resistance and they are interpreted it as God's rejection. And so they're giving up. If this message has stood out to you and bless you, may I ask you, share it with somebody. Again, share it with a friend. Share it on your timeline. Just share the message. I could not care less about who comes and likes my video. <laughs> I'm just being honest. I don't care about that. Again, what I care about is people's lives being transformed and changed and people being, again, revived in their spirit to walk out the call of God. I often say this, and many of you know, it's my ethos, my reason, my purpose is found in helping you fulfill yours. And so may this video do just that to those who hear it today, tomorrow, or any other day. Bless you, bless you, love you all. And until again, again, let's continue to hold fast and know that their resistance is not your rejection. Blessings, friends. Blessings to you. Amen. Love you all. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you.